Hello everyone. Welcome to NPTEL course on remote sensing and GIS for rural development. This is week one, lecture three. As indicated earlier, this week is mostly for you to get introduced to the topic and to understand why do we need to contribute to rural development? What are the issues in rural development? And what are the reasons for the issues? We will also focus on tools that are available to lessen these issues or provide solutions to the problems. And more importantly, what are the open source systems? By definition, open source includes free software, free data, or open to public tools. So let's go ahead with the lecture three today. In the last lectures, we looked at the water security in, and how it is tied to rural development. Another thing which is very, very important is food security, malnutrition in rural context. Food security doesn't only mean that are we producing enough food, but is it also going to the vulnerable people? And in this case, the most vulnerable are the rural population. Sometimes it is sad to understand that those who produce the food cannot afford to consume it. We will go through the reasons on how and why and what can be done in this context. To start with, while we discuss this important topic today, as per the news that came out today, the world has hit 8 billion population. And the projections are not that good also. The hope is we will be peaking by 2060. You can see here the peak is still rising. So we are on the rising limb of the population. And due to many, many schemes and information, education, training, the population curve is expected to come down after 2016. And then India's population will come down, hopefully. We should understand that the population has increased not only because of our past activities in having more children, but also it has been due to advancements in science and technology that has saved many lives. So the death rate has come down, the population is still increasing. So there is an ongoing trend and we cannot expect sudden tapering off or sudden peaking and then coming down like the COVID cases we saw last two years it will be slowly growing and then slowly curving down. So for this, approximately we are one seventh of the world, India's population, and 70% of the population lives in rural entities. So leave the population that is <coughs> at the rural entities. For all this 1.4 billion, as per this data, 1.4 billion, 1.7 billion people in India, the food mostly comes from within India. We do import food product, produce, but it's not that much. Still, the major staple, as in rice, 
meat, pulses, cereals, oil, all these come from local entities. Some of the oil like sunflower and uh, palm oil does come from outside, but mostly we do produce our coconut oil and etc. Sesame oil, mustard oil. <laughs> so to cater for the entire population, there is tremendous stress on rural entities. And this stress comes in two major resources, which is water and the soil, fertility, et cetera, that contribute to the food production. So the natural resources as water is being highly stressed, which we saw in the previous lecture. In today's lecture, all these population increase and the slowing or lessening of the soil, fertility, and water resources is contributing to lesser food uh, production or yield as we call crop yield from the ground. And this impacts food security. So food security is important for development. At the end of the day, we all eat food. Development happens or not, you're in a high uh, developed country or in a poor country, we need food. So the only common denominator here is food. May not be a luxury food, but it at least it should be the staple staple food as rice, um, uh, millets, or something, right? So we have to produce food, uh, and that that is why food security is very important. So please understand that uh, rural development should incorporate food security, but also for the nation's de development, we do need food security. If suppose we just develop industry, produce more cars, computers cell phones, and the food security is not attained, then we will have to go and ask food from other countries, wherein we'll have to be dependent on other countries for the basic needs. So food is always the basic need, food, water, clothing, air quality, etc. So it is important to understand that even though our development is peaking, which is healthy, uh, your GDP is rising. We need to make it sustainable, but by also considering the food security. And the food security comes from rural entities. So we need to develop rural economies to support the Food Security Act. Another widespread thing is the malnutrition, which means people get food, but is it nutritious? In those days, we had chicken and eggs coming from the local breeds, but now we do have other breeds, right? So quick, fast um, growing chickens, um, more eggs produced, etc. So if you compare the nutritious value of both these produce, you would see that the local variety uh, and the native species would have high nutritious content uh, compared to the broiler or poultry industry chicken. However, this takes a long time to produce the desi chicken we call or the uh, native species, whereas the poultry chicken is quick, which which is better for the Food Security Act, right? In those days, just compare. Let's let's do a small comparison for those uh, who eat non-veg. Uh, in those days, uh, I'm talking about like 20 years ago uh, or or even 30 years ago, um, the food uh, we eat. The, the non veg or uh, because non veg consumes a lot of effort and water and um, other resources. That's why I'm picking on, on these uh, aspects. Um, those we would have only once a week or once during the festival seasons. But now, uh, due to the demand and the affordability, because we do have a uh, high GDP compared to the previous 30 years, we are buying and the demand is high, so we have industry produced. So food security is important. However, is the food given at nutritious level is also important. Otherwise, you'll be spending more money on health issues. So the Green Revolution was big part, as you would have known, because the population was increasing. Before the Green Revolution, we used to import a lot of food. There was a lot of um, starvation, um, rationing of food. Uh, but nowadays, we don't see that much because of, thanks to Green Revolution. The way Green Revolution expanded, there is a lot of debate. Is it sustainable or not? Uh, we will not get into that. Uh, we will only concentrate on how it impacted the food security. 
because once you understand that concept, you will also understand that for rural development, green revolution is important. However, it has to also be sustainable. And for that, there are a lot of indicators that we can attach to green revolution and this uh, uh, increase in food productivity. And that can come from your remote sensing and GIS. So this is how we tie it up because there's no data. So for example, I need to go 20 years ago, 30 years ago and look at the soil fertility, the water availability. There's no data, observation data. But if you use remote sensing and GIS, yes, you can go back to at least 40, 50 years. Some level of accuracy is there. Right now, the accuracy level is very high. But if you uh, go 50 years ago, and use remote sensing and GIS uh, imagery uh, to understand uh, the uh, water resources for rural development or soil and food security. Uh, the accuracy level is low, but still you get the best vision. Uh, you get the best data available because observation data was not there. So let's look at green revolution and production. This is for food security. Please put on a lens that looks at this data as what has it done for food security? But also growing these require a lot of natural resources, which may impact rural development. For example, if you take so much water out, then you don't have bad, good quality water for drinking or for industrial purposes or for sanitation. And this has been a cause in big urban cities also, you would have noticed. So let's look at uh, the green revolution production. What has happened? And also you will understand the nutritious value right now. So you could see rice uh, in 1950s, we were 26.29, but then it increased uh, almost four times by your 2010, 2017. This is highly unsustainable. If you can go four times uh, in as much as 60 years, um, because rice and wheat requires a lot of water and soil fertility. It doesn't put back soil fertility like other crops I'm going to talk about. So the traditional crops as sorghum, pearl millet, finger millet, small millets, maize, corn, barley, all these traditional food, it consumed less water, less fertility, and more important, it also helped in fixing certain kind of nutrients in the soil. So when I said go back 50 years, so you would have seen that 50 years ago, using satellites and GIS uh, data, uh, the rice cultivation was less, wheat was less compared to now, and the millets was really, really low compared to the other crops. And those regions would have, have had good amount of water and good amount of soil fertility, which contributed to rural development. But that is not the case now. So let's look at it. Rice has increased four times, whereas your wheat has increased 10 times in 50 years. Just look at how it's just rising. And if you take the data now, which is four or five years, from the last data in this study, uh, you will see that still more crops in these two categories have been growing. On the other hand, you would see sorghum coming down, jowar, and your bajra and ragi, your pearl millet and finger millet, which are claimed to be very, very good for diabetics, cholesterol, hypertension, etc. So those have actually come down, except bajra. The others have come down. But the point is, even though Green Revolution helped, what did Green Revolution bring? A lot of technology, fertilizers, pesticides, groundwater pumps to enhance the yield and to increase the intensity of crops. Okay, I'll have another slide to talk about that. But here, what you could see that even though the technology came in in the Green Revolution time, 1960s, I would say, it did not impact more on the low cost or low impacted crops, which is the millets, sorghum, maize, barley. It was mostly used for the high cash crops, rice, wheat, sugarcane, even cereals and pulses, but mostly rice and wheat. Wheat, we used to import a lot, 
now we are exporting. You would have uh, looked at the news and all. So the point here is, yes, green revolution helped to increase uh, your crops, yield, production, etc. But also it has damaged a lot on the fertility and the water availability. And these may not be the most nutritious food because nutritious food did not grow as much. If you compare the nutrition values, you can see that how it has compared. And when something grows very fast and um, using different techniques, the nutrition value is different compared to traditional. Always the traditional, that's why organic is there, right? Organic food has a lot of tradition, nutrition value and traditionally it is being grown as in with vermicompost opposed to fertilizers, chemical fertilizers, and with good water resources. So these crops have been tremendously increased due to green revolution. And now people consume a lot and have access to food, but are they eating the correct food? So that is a different angle. But since this course is going to be looking at food security, which is, are you getting food the first step, then the nutritious value. So first you need food to live uh, and then healthy food to be nutritious and then you go down a level. So let's look at the food security. Yes, we have, uh, have better food security compared to the last 40, 50 years, thanks to Green Revolution. And to keep this sustainable and to develop rural economies, we need to be cautious about it. We should also look at, has these actually impacted rural development? As in, has the farmers become more uh, economically stable or socially stable is a question. Okay, So there are a lot, a lot of um, aspects and that is where uh, I'm going to come into the picture of wastage and how much wastage we do. Uh, then we will look at the issues and concerns. So has this addressed food security in rural areas? Almost yes, because the access to food has increased. Rice and wheat has been the most stable food and now people have access to it. However, there are some issues and concerns. Let's look at them. The first major issue is crop loss. The crop loss is defined as you are growing a crop and before it is time to harvest, you lose the crop. And the most important factor that drives these is climate extremes. What do you mean by climate extremes? Is tremendous floods, too much water, because it just washes away the crops, or the flood water stagnates uh, the on top of the soil, and suffocates the roots because the roots um, need also air to breathe. Uh, but then if water is totally inside the roots, it suffocates and dies. You should not let the roots rot in water, but that happens during floods. So that is one climate extreme. The other climate extreme is too less water, which is drought. So if you have a tremendous long spell of summertime, you will see nowadays, right? Like a lot of uh, heat records broken, uh, the summer is expanding uh, and uh, all the soil water is evaporated or lost in the groundwater pumping. In those times, what happens is the crop is lost. The crop starts to grow healthy, but because of the intense heat, too much temperature, air temperature, and less soil water availability, you lose the crop. So the crop loss is driven by climate extremes, one of which it's two floods and droughts. You could see here in this uh, study uh, that uh, impact of climate change on mustard yield, just one yield, one crop yield uh, uh, and adaptation gains in 2020 scenario. So what they have done is uh, you could see that if you look at the mustard yield, the standard deviation or the relative uh, yield deviation, uh, you could see that most of India is in the red, which means because of climate, the yield is reducing, the crop is lost. 
yield reduction can also happen by the crop can grow, but the produce doesn't come as big. Okay, so for example, if you are growing a coconut tree uh, or let's say mango tree and each mango is 200 grams. A yield reduction can be the total tree is lost or the mango is only 30 grams, smaller in size, no flesh. And that is a loss in the yield. Okay, so coming back, the first image, which is A, shows that there is tremendous loss in crop yield across the mustard species. Only some areas they have positive because the climate change also has positive side effects in a very small, small places. But most of India is negative impact. You can see all of it is red or orange, um, which is below zero or zero. Uh, and uh, only some parts are getting more water because of climate change impacts. And those are in the green. So the net is we are losing mustard due to climate impact. But if you do adaptation, so climate adaptation plans, which is part of the rural development program, which I explained about Mandrega, IWMP in the previous lectures. If you do that, then yes, there is potential to lessen the climate impact due to adaptation. And then the produce is increased or the yield is increased. And you can see in the positives, most of India is in the positive. This could be water sharing, uh, soil and, and water conservation activities, better uh, crop varieties, uh, hybrids, etc. Or pest management. Okay, so that is one. The next is pest. Pest is a tremendous uh, reducer of crop yield and crop productivity. Uh, if you look at this study, you could look at see that uh, mostly the potential yield is approximately sixty percent for wheat, maize, soybean, groundnut, and sorghum. So sixty percent of the yield. So let's say one acre you are planting more than 50% of the area is lost. So think about the water consumption for the loss, the time labor consumption uh, loss, and all the natural resources, the soil fertility, et cetera, et cetera. Because the crop will grow, but the produce won't come. Okay, So the crop is still taking the soil fertility, not only the seeds, which is the wheat and rice that we consume, but also the shoots, the plant itself consumes a lot of. Uh, energy and for the nutrition, nutrition from the soil. So that is the potential loss due to weeds and pest. Weeds are different um, crops that grow in between and most of them are also impacted, less impacted by pest. Pests are the insects that eat on uh, the crops and stuff. So that reduction in yield is there. And then uh, the actual yield is, so the potential is the maximum. The actual yield is around 30 to 40%. From this data. The other biggest concern that we have is food waste or crop waste. So now the farmer has sweated 50% loss in the land, uh, but still they grow something, put it in uh, your uh, transportation containers or uh, sack bags, and then they send it to the city or the industries to, to uh, process. Uh, but on the way, transportation is bad, um, the roads are not well connected, so some crops yield is lost. Let's say you're having eggs uh, and the transportation is very bad, so you do lose some eggs. Let's think about fruits. Uh, on the way, because the roads are not good, the connectivity is not good, uh, you have loss in the fruit produce. So you could see that the, the fruit that is, uh, really squished and uh, not as good um, as uh, the when you harvest it. Those sell for very less price on the street markets, whereas the fruit which is covered in paper and plastic bags and thermocol, <clears throat> those are in a high level shops. So those do not cater back to the farmer because the in between there is a medium, there is a broker that works for this transportation and they take all the benefits. So for the farmer, it's still a loss, right? Because all the food is not consumed at the market. Uh, there's a big loss. Then there is quality during harvest, food wasted during harvest. So the quality of the food that you take, produce um, rice and wheat that you harvest, is not the same as it ends up because there is a lot of loss 
um, in, in the uh, transportation, the processing of the food. Limited storage. This is a big, big concern. You put all this green revolution, the techniques and models, and you have made this harvest. However, if you do not have a storage, then you lose the harvest. Think about this. You're going to a market. You buy 20 kilos of fruits, vegetables, etc., and then you bring it to your fridge. However, in your fridge, you only have 10 uh, kilogram space. So you stuff everything, but you leave the rest 10 kilograms outside. If you don't consume it fast, the 10 kilograms is lost. So that is what actually happens in a big scale when you talk about storage. So there are new rules and laws being um, drafted by the government to help build more storage structures and better energy consuming storage structures to help farmers. Where do you place them? Where is the need? Comes from remote sensing and GIS. We'll look into that in the specific food um, sector. And we also are lo losing a lot of food uh, at the household level. So you bring all the food uh, and then you save it. The farmer has sweated. The rural economy has worked very hard to bring the food to your table, but then still there's a lot of food. So through this lecture, I also wanted to put a fact that uh, India is the second highest food waster in the world. Uh, when people are uh, starving for food, when people do not have access to food, it is very, very important to save food. So please uh, do not waste food um, and think about rural development, how, how um, people have worked very hard to bring this food to your table. Uh, so let's try to bring this chat down. Okay. So while we discuss this, uh, the point, the driving point is crop yield growth is needed to supply food security for the growing population, right? And for that, uh, we need to have raised the food production by 35%. So global food demand is expected to go 35% up. So you have to match that 35% by increasing the crop production. So what has happened from 2005 from the study till date is that the land is limited. You're not going to build new land and then put crops on it and grow. The, the land is still the same, right? So you can convert like some barren land, some science and technology interventions, uh, water that comes or uh, aquaponics uh, or use coconut fibers um, or wastage from uh, fish farms to grow some crops. So that is very limited, only 9% you can increase, okay? So let's say 35%, you have to increase. So let's break it into 100. And then 9% of that can come from increased land cultivation. There are some people who would, uh, some countries, if you see, have cleared forests and then put crops in it, uh, especially South America. But that we're not talking about. We're talking about using science and technology and increase land cultivation very minimum, but the majority will still come from yield increase, which means uh, you are having the land, the land was giving 100 kilos, now you're going to convert it to give 200, 300 kilos of crop. That is called yield increase. What is cropping intensity increase? So for example, there is a land, it was growing only one crop per year. When you say cropping intensity increase, you're going to make it grow two crops, which means use two different types of crops that grow in six, six months in this land. So that is increasing the crop intensity, but still that is only 14%. So if you combine 14% and 9%, almost you have 25%, which is uh, not good for your entire 35% increase. So the rest 77% has to come from yield increase which is already the land is there and that land has been producing crops, 100 kilograms, but you're going to increase it to 200 or 300 kilograms, okay? And that comes by creating more rural development structures, let's say water, uh, energy, and uh, food processing so that they develop and then contribute to more yield increase. If this is not sustainable, if the yield increase is not sustainable, suddenly it will fall. So it's better to do it through the rural development. For example, how do you capture water, excess water running off and capture it, apply it to the field, increase the yield? How do you 
capture your nutrients that are in the air, like nitrogen, and then fix it in the soil and create yield increase? Or how do you manage the land well using vermicompost and other things to do yield increase? So this is rural development. And all these yield increase can be studied very well using remote sensing and GIS. But more importantly, the negative impacts can also be studied using remote sensing and GIS, which we'll be looking at. So to conclude today's lecture, food security is very important. There are food banks you have seen across the world and in urban cities, we have some fridges on, this, on the roads like Chennai has in some places where people have food. There are, there are um, um, small canteens by the government which sell uh, idlis and dosa for two rupees, five rupees, very, very minimum, so that the food security is reached. People should not go hung hungry. Um, you should bring down the death rate due to hunger. So hunger deaths is not good for a country. It doesn't reflect well uh, as a developing nation, right? So you try to bring it down. Soup kitchens are set up something like canteens that give uh, free food. A lot of um, NGOs are doing it. Um, and then child nutrition uh, is being taken up. If you look at uh, the government's program, there's tremendous uh, increase in the child nutrition um, by uh, supplying nutritious food like millets in their uh, midday scheme. For example, Odisha and um, Karnataka are giving millets through uh, an NGO called Vasan. Uh, I work very closely with them. Uh, but mostly, you can also see other states picking up ideas from, uh, like for example, Tamil Nadu on introducing eggs in the in the midday scheme. So eggs have a lot of uh, protein and nutrients, right? So uh, this is about food security is feeding them, but also bringing up the nutrition value. So to to cater to that, the rural development should occur, and then the food is produced and given to these sectors, and then the food security is reached. Let's see how it is. So you have better um, gardening and farmers markets to connect farmers to the local demand. We don't we know where the farmers are, but we don't know where the demand is. So if you have two maps about a map with farmers and a map with demand, then you can match them and see how long it takes and distance, et cetera. Food production farmers, the farmers need high technology and um, to understand what is happening in their soil and water resources, remote sensing and GIS will be using for that. Uh, education, we need to know where to put the schools uh, and then the mentor program where like, for example, IIT, we go and, and, and uh, teach some schools in the villages. Uh, so how do you connect with that? How far it is? All these can be mapped. First, you map it and then you put infrastructures to create this education system. So food security combines all this, structures for food distribution and uh, nutrition uh, checking, uh, food production on the ground through rural enterprises, and most importantly, educating the people. So key to understand food security for rural development uh, is to understand uh, the impact of farmers uh, socially, economically, and their health, because they have to eat healthy, nutritious food to produce nutritious food. Right. So if farmers are weak, uh, they cannot put so much time and energy in the field to bring food to you. So it is also as important to check on their health and nutritious level. Uh, rural regions work harder to protect food security of the nation. Actually, the, the hardest, I would say, uh, because um, no one else works that hard to attain the food security. If the farmers stop, if the farmers do not produce um, food for our food security, then we will have to go to other countries and ask for food. That doesn't look good on the international scale, right? So um, we, are, we are giving a lot of food as ration, uh, as uh, an aid. So the government helps and supports a lot of countries during uh, tremendous um, times. Like for example, now you would have seen in news that Sri Lanka was given a lot of food. Uh, because there was a food security issue. And that time, uh, India was giving uh, milk powders, um, food, rice, wheat, uh, sugar, all these things to keep the people, uh, you know, under food security and then develop. So need to provide data to increase food security. Actual data is needed. Otherwise, if 
farmers overproduce, there is no storage to keep the food. So that is the other issue. So we do need a lot of food um, uh, related data uh, and map it on remote sensing and GIS platforms to understand food security. So data collection may be expensive and time consuming. Uh, thankfully, we have this course where we will look at remote sensing and GIS tools, which are uh, free and open source, uh, and it is less time consuming to understand this data for food security. All this is tied back to rural development. I hope this uh, lecture uh, gave ideas about food security and rural development. I will see you in the next class. Thank you.